This video is for all of you moon landing hoax conspiracy theorists who point to this photograph and others like it, which show objects in shadow allegedly lit by some secondary light source. In your conceit, you believe that you or some equally unqualified previous conspiracy theorist are such an assiduous photo detective that you are actually able to catch mistakes made by NASA engineers and physicists and which have been missed for the last 40 years by thousands of other rocket scientists from many countries including the Soviets. They have all had access to all the photos and videos you have seen and yet you are among the perceptive few who find this to be evidence of fraud. But, as is the case with virtually all of your hoax claims, you are working from a position of ignorance. And, with incredible gall, you believe that any question you can't answer must mean the Apollo missions were faked. This particular question has been answered many times, but once more won't hurt. The astronaut appears lit because he is. The surface of the moon is very bright. It will light up the astronaut because he is above it. But the surface itself is too low to be lit by the surrounding terrain. You people are so fond of shadow arguments, why didn't you notice this? The shadows are all on the upward facing surfaces of the astronaut's legs, arms, and backpack. This means that the additional lighting source is coming from below him. Mythbusters did a very good demonstration of this lighting effect. Spurious arguments about albedo, like Jarrah White makes, are completely moot. Look at the relative brightness of the sunlit surface to the brightness of the astronaut. You can see it with your own eyes. The surface is much brighter and completely surrounds him, so it is quite adequate to light him up that much. The moon is 240,000 miles away, and we need filters to look at it through a telescope. So albedo arguments here are utterly irrelevant. It would be as if your neighbor's kids are practicing with their electric guitars and the noise is bothering you. Then they make the argument that you shouldn't be able to hear it because their amps are only set to 70 decibels and according to their estimates the noise is all in your mind. So how many of you have asked this next question believing that your inability to answer it means that we faked the moon landings? You laugh and you gloat. <laughs> and actually believe that NASA would make a mistake like that. The astronaut is Buzz Aldrin and Armstrong is taking the picture. What? You found another hoax proof in this picture? The camera, which took the video of Armstrong stepping onto the moon, recorded this scene too. It's back on the other side of the LEM. These clips from that video show Armstrong right after taking the previous pictures, as he is walking back toward the LEM. As you can see, he is so bright against the black background that it even makes a video halo. Armstrong's bright suit is what caused the hot spots on Aldrin's boots. Also, if there was a second light source being used, the ground shadow would not be so black, and objects in the field would cast shadows on it. The only way for this shadow to be so dark is if the second light was on the ground. Well, it is the ground. 
There are many photos from Earth orbit where items not directly lit by the Sun or the Earth can easily be seen. They may be very light or very dark depending on what other nearby surfaces are lighting them up. These are lit indirectly by other bright surfaces like Buzz was lit by the surface of the Moon. David Percy claims to be an expert in photography but incredibly doesn't seem to understand about fill lighting. And as long as we have this picture up, let's take a look at another wildly popular hoax conspiracy claim that the astronauts were suspended from wires. Here is the antenna which was on the ops pack. It was stowable so it doesn't show up in all pictures. Somebody saw a video where this antenna flashed and a lens flare appeared above it. Again, David Percy capitalized on that in his video showing this flash in a couple of scenes. He thinks it proves they were supported by wires. Apparently this self-proclaimed expert doesn't know about lens flare either. I thought it would be fun to show some of the training photos that were taken before Apollo 11 took off. In these it's clear that the object is not a suspension wire. It is the culprit for all of the wire claims. It's amazing to me how this utterly stupid claim has endured. I'd like to see one of the hoax believers come up with the design for a wire suspension system which would allow these astronauts to move completely around each other as they are seen to do many times when they're on the surface of the moon. Maybe Mr. Percy could design one of those for us. No, there's no more yeah but, no more ad hoc arguments. How many times must hoax believers see their precious proofs demolished before they finally catch on? All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. We went to the moon. Tower cleared. Okay, we got a roll program. Neil Armstrong reporting the roll and pitch program, which puts Apollo 11 on a proper heading. 